Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. You know how we follow the Fen treasure? Yes. All right. Well, we also follow the story about D.B. Cooper, and yes. we learned about some coding that recently has led them to another suspect. Right. Well, I have a story next that kind of combines both. Ooh. Treasure and coding. Ooh, I'm intrigued. Stay tuned for the next Men Are So Smart. Hi there, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Thank you so much for watching Men Are So Smart today. We sure do appreciate it. Wanted to mention that if at any time you have any information that you'd like to get about either one of us, you can find that below, ways to contact us. All of our social media is there, our blogs, our website, and also our sponsors. And we ask you to patronize those sponsors as you need their goods or services. Mm -hmm. Today on the show, the lost treasure of the Beale Ciphers. Ooh. Have you ever heard of this? I had not. Let me tell you. Tell me more. More than a century ago, a small pamphlet was published titled the Beale Papers, which contained three cipher texts. Who knew they even had cell phones back then? <laughs> wow. Not that kind of text. Oh, okay. The mysterious codes supposedly gave directions to a treasure buried in a secret location in Bedford County, Virginia in the 1820s. Okay. The cryptic texts have captured the imagination and enthusiasm of avid crypto cryptographers and treasure hunters ever since. However, despite numerous digs and countless attempts to crack the code, two of the three ciphers remained undeciphered, and no treasure has ever been found. So, according to the story set out in the 1885 pamphlet, an American man by the name of Thomas Beale came across a treasure consisting of gold, silver, and jewels in a mine located north of Santa Fe. What? Huh. He found Fenn's treasure before it was even buried. <laughs> <laughs> now that's some treasure hunting right there. Beale and 30 fellow adventurers transported the hoard to Bedford County, where they buried it in a secure location. Beale then wrote three encoded letters, one giving the exact location of the treasure, a second giving its detailed description, and a third giving the names and contact information of the 30 partners. He placed them in an iron box and gave them to a trusted friend, the local innkeeper named Robert Morris, before disappearing, never to be seen again. Wow, so Robert Morris <laughs> has the box. Yes. The story goes that Beale instructed Morris not to open the box unless he or his 30 partners failed to return from a journey within 10 years. When Beale hadn't returned 23 years later, Morris opened the box and was stunned and excited by what he read. He immediately began trying to decode the three ciphers, but after decades of attempts, he was no closer to solving the mystery. Before he died, Morris gave the papers to an unnamed friend, and he too spent decades working on the decryption of the messages. Hmm. Uh, so using an edition of the United States Declaration of Independence as the key, this friend managed to success successfully decipher the second of the three cipher texts, which gives a description of the buried treasure. It reads as follows. The first deposit consisted of 1,000 and 1,400 pounds of gold and 3,812 pounds of silver deposited. Uh, 18, oh, de deposited November 1819. The second was made December 1821 and consisted of 1,907 pounds of gold and 1,288 of silver. Also, jewels obtained in the St. Louis, uh, obtained in St. Louis in exchange for silver to save transportation and valued at $13,000. Here comes a big wow. however. 
However, unable to decipher the remaining two texts, including, most importantly, the cipher containing the location of the treasure, the friend ultimately made the story and the ciphers public in the Beale Papers pamphlet published by another friend, James B. Ward, in 1885. Uh, the publication of the paper sparked a frenzied attempt to decipher the mysterious codes and treasure hunters, impatient with attempts to unlock the remaining codes, grabbed their shovels and headed for the hills of Bedford County <laughs> and began digging. Just anywhere. Yeah. The second cipher described the location as being within four miles of Bedford Tavern. Whoa, okay. While some will never be swayed in their resolve to find the treasure, some experts consider the Beale ciphers to be an elaborate hoax. Cryptographer Jim Gilalgi, in his 1989 article, A Dissenting Opinion, and forensic linguist Joe Nickel, in his article, in a 1982 issue of the Virginia Magazine of History and Biography, they both present compelling arguments suggesting that the person who published the 1885 pamphlet, supposedly James B. Ward, was the same person who wrote the original letter with the ciphers, supposedly Thomas J. Beale. A linguistic an analysis, for instance, revealed strong similarities in writing style between the original letter and the published papers, including the same use of punctuation, grammar, and vocabulary. Interesting. Hmm, however, though, here's a little bit of a tidbit. Joe Nickel also pointed out that the original letters, supposedly written in the 1820s, used words such as stampede and improvise, which were not in use until the 1840s, indicating that they could have been written at, at or could not have been written at the time alleged. Attempts to track down the mysterious Thomas J. Beale from Virginia were also met with dead ends. Could it be that the Beale papers were just an elaborate ploy? carried out by James B. Ward to earn a few extra dollars. Those pamphlets that he sold, 50 cents a piece, roughly equivalent to $13 today. Dang. And the author was no doubt expecting a wide and enthusiastic readership. Uh, despite all the evidence suggesting that the whole story is nothing more than a hoax, dedicated cryptographers continue to work tires, tire, tirelessly on the code and fortune seekers still come the Bedford County countryside for the elusive and perhaps non-existent treasure spurred on by the thrill of perhaps one day solving the centuries old riddle of Beale's ciphers. I'm showing you those ciphers right now. Mm. And thrill of the chase. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says. Uh, where warm waters halt. No. <laughs> yeah. Look for a brown house. No. No. <laughs> All right, so there you have it. Uh, is that treasure out there, or is this a hoax? You know what? I would have to say that by now, I, I would have to imagine that all this land has been built upon by now. And so if it was out there, it's been dug up and is now in some <laughs> landfill somewhere. I don't know. I just there's not much undeveloped land anywhere anymore. So except where Forrest hid his treasure. Yeah. Uh, I I don't believe that there is a treasure. Uh, in the research that I show, uh, I think it's just a big hoax. I, th I think it is. And uh, you know that just goes to show you that sometimes the story of the treasure is actually more than the treasure itself. Yeah. Think about that for a little bit. Yep. Thank you for watching today. Yep. All of our information, as we mentioned at the top of the show, you'll find listed below all the ways to contact us and our sponsors. Uh, we'd like to thank you. We'd like to thank them. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corbett Ronnie. And this has been a treasure-filled episode of Men Are So Smart.